Today's lesson, we're looking at a completely different topic. We're looking at subjunctive. Now, I haven't done a video called subjunctive, but I have done another video on, or many videos on, second and third conditional, which are forms. Well, it's a, a time when we use the subjunctive, so you have already heard about this. And we use it with hypotheticals, and I've made a video on hypotheticals as well, where we use the subjunctive, which is presented here. Um, we actually use the subjunctive with reporting verbs. I don't think I made this very clear or perhaps uh, I didn't speak about it very much at all when I did my series on reporting verbs. Um, so we'll talk about that today in this video. And there's even some adjectives and some nouns, some situations there when we can use the subjunctive. And I've got some archaic forms of the subjunctive or some old kind of set expressions which we use which show us forms of the subjunctive. And I want to also mention inversion. But um, firstly, what is the subjunctive? So it looks looks like this. The indicative form, and I just mean the ordinary everyday form of to be, is I am, he is, in you, we, they are. Okay, right? This indicative, it just means these are the normal forms, okay? In a present tense with to be, we say I am, he is, and you are. But with the subjunctive, we say I be, he be, she be, they be, in the present tense, it's just be. It's just the infinitive of be. It's just be. I be, you be, he be, we be. Um, if it's a, another verb like play, with I, you, he, well, with I, you or they, it's just I play, yeah? And so the subjunctive is the same. It's I play. But with he and she, it's he or she plays. And in the subjunctive, we just use the first form of the verb, play. OK, so that's the only difference in present tense. And this is the only difference in past. Um, was goes to were. And I think everyone will probably have heard of this before. Maybe not. But in second and third conditional, we can and do say if he were, if she were. And if I were as well, we say if I were. Yeah. Um, so we, we don't necessarily say if I was. We say if I were. Um, and it actually sounds more royal. Now, the first thing to remember, if you've never used a subjunctive before, don't worry, because in Britain, um, and I've read that it's not so common in America, they do actually still use this subjunctive very often, but in Britain, the indicative forms do seem to be taking more and more precedence. Um, you hear them more and more often, um, but I still think this form sounds very royal, uh, especially in second conditional, if I were, if he were. Um, it sounds very formal. Um, so it's worth knowing, certainly. But the indicative form is still OK to use. Um, but we use also, yeah, so you need to remember about was to were. One more thing. Um, you can use these in continuous forms, which would just be be doing, be playing, um, and were going, were playing. And so you can see them in continuous forms, but I haven't gone into them because these are the main differences. In a perfect form with has, it would actually be have, but I haven't written this down um, because I don't think we very often in Britain, we very often see the perfect form being used in subjunctive. I think these are the main situations. Now, we use this subjunctive form in second and third conditional. The most obvious example being if I were. Yeah, let's get this down on paper. If I were is a form of the subjunctive. And we also say, I wish I were rich. Yeah, I wish I were rich. We don't, it just sounds more formal than I wish I was rich, but that would still be okay. Um, now, to give you some present forms, because I think people quite often haven't seen these present forms, although they're very familiar with the past form. Now, of course, we only see the past form in second and third conditional because we use past simple um, and past perfect for second and third conditional. Um, but, uh, yeah, with, with the present form, I can show you this with um, the reporting verbs down here. Um, the past forms you see with second and third conditional and with hypotheticals. Remember, this is not just imagine and suppose. Yeah, imagine you were rich. Suppose you were um, a woman and not a man, whatever it is. Um, then you must use these past forms. 
Okay, now coming on to number three, this is where I can show you these present forms, because second and third conditional and hypotheticals, you will have only seen this. But with reporting verbs, for example, um, all of these ones, advise, ask, demand, desire, insist, propose, recommend, request, urge, um, and have I not put it? Suggest as well, very obvious one, suggest. Um, with these verbs, you can say, uh, to put it into the subjunctive, you can say, I suggest he go to the shops. I suggest he go. Not, I suggest he goes. Now, we can use that as well, or we can omit it. It's up to the, it's our decision, it's up to us. He go to the shops. Now, notice it's not he goes, it's he go. And this is because it's a subjunctive. And uh, we can do this with insist as well. I insist she do this project. Yeah, something like that. I, I request um, my friend um, be involved in this project. Then we'd be using that plus a third form because it's passive. Yeah, I suggest that he, my friend, be involved or be included in the in the project i request i ask that he be included in the project i recommend that he be included in the project i propose that he be included in the project any of these reporting verbs you can see this present subjunctive you can see be and the third form or perhaps just um that he work that he go that he do okay so you will see this form as well um, so it's not just the reporting verbs that you'll see with sub subjunctive um, and by the way that does make these reporting verbs very complicated because you've you've got enough to think about anyway with the reporting verbs but there's also a subjunctive form that's possible so you can say I suggest he go I suggest he goes I suggest that he should go or I suggest no, that's enough. I suggest that he should go, that he goes. There are many forms possible. Now, another ex uh, situation when it's um, good to use subjunctive is with these sentences. It is essential. It is important. It is best. It's crucial. It's vital. It's necessary that he be in charge of the project. Yeah, that he be in charge of the project. Now, I hope you can see that this is also a form of uh, subjunctive. We're using this one here. We're using the present subjunctive. And, uh, yeah, you can also say it's a good idea that he be in charge. And really, you're giving your advice. You're saying that this should be the case. So notice that this subjunctive it is used in, on certain occasions when you're advising something or suggesting something or requesting something. That's when you use this subjunctive. And you can even do it with nouns like there is a suggestion that he be in charge or there is the wish there is the desire that he be in charge um, and of course this on condition that which is a conditional and so this would also be we will sign the contract on condition that he be in charge of the project or simply it is our intention that he be in charge um, so you can use some noun expressions as well with this subjunctive but still you're making requests or demands or giving advice or making a suggestion now you can often see inversion with this uh, subjunctive you can see it very often in second and third conditional yeah had I been involved it would have been much more successful yeah and it's the same as if I had been involved or were were I to be rich were I rich you could just say it like that were I rich I would buy a yacht so you can see inversion in second and third conditional well you see it very often in subjunctive so the most obvious example is an old nursery rhyme um, Jack and the Beanstalk uh, he says be he alive or be he dead I'll grind his bones to, to make my bread and it's got the instead of if he is alive or if he is dead I will kill him it's he be uh, sorry be he alive it's inverted but we're still using the he be here uh, right at the top it sounds funny but it's it's there in a lot of archaic forms and we've got loads of fixed expressions down here which show which demonstrate um, some of these subjunctive expressions so heaven forbid that that should happen or that that he would do that um, really we're speaking hypothetically here and that's why it's subjunctive subjunctive is hypothetical and instead of heaven forbids 
we say heaven forbid we also see very often um so be it and this is a very old expression meaning you know uh so it is so it is but you can see that we've got the inversion we've got be it instead of it is it be um and so you might see that at the end of an if sentence if he would like to do so so be it something like that if truth be told not if truth is told but if truth be told so it's subjunctive suffice it to say which means it is enough to say um, it means it suffices to say but because there's no s because of subjunctive suffice it is inverted suffice it to say be that as it may is an inverted subjunctive far be it from me is an inverted subjunctive and lastly at the wedding ceremony you give your you uh, make your wedding vows and you say until death do us part so please if you have any questions at all about uh some of this uh subjunctive please put them under the video and um, please like the video if you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you all soon.